I am here at a uh, undisclosed rock pile in uh, somewhere in Hamilton. I thought I'd just show you around a bit. And I actually just saw, I spotted something interesting. And this will be interesting for like uh, local arrowhead collectors. Um, if you notice in this rock, you see all those uh, gray clumps. That is Ancaster Chirp. Or I guess you could also consider it Lockport Chirp. But those are nodules of Ancaster Chirp. Um, which is interesting. So you can see what their host rock looks like and what they look like in the host rock. Let's see if I can get a closer look at them. So yeah, you can see that kind of light gray and you can even see some of the uh, rust spots on that top one. But yeah, this is the type of host rock that Ancaster Church comes out of, which is a, this would be like a, um, a dolomite, uh, some people call it dollar stone um, matrix. So I found this just laying out there. Those are some pretty big uh, dog tooth uh, calcite crystals. I might take that home if I can uh, make this a little smaller because I'm not carrying that down. Um, but it, they probably came out of this boulder. You could see there's more here. So I'm gonna try and poke around uh, this rock specifically. Just pull off this stuff. Like some of this stuff is kind of loose and just see if I can expose any more bugs and go from there. And you can actually see over here, there's a, there's a bug in here too. So I'm gonna see if I can expose some of it and go from there. So I've been chipping away at this thing and I've gotten it quite, uh, the large crystals quite nicely exposed. I managed to just shear off one side and I'm just going to keep trimming this down and hopefully I can get it into something that I can fit in my backpack easily. So this is how much I exposed. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this crystal got loose, but I can glue that one back on. It's only one. I just stopped um, removing all. It's, uh, oops, sorry, let me get that out of the way. Um, it's uh, cleaned up enough and lightened up enough that I'm willing to uh, carry it home. Because I do... I am not exactly in the most um, easy going terrain, let's put it that way. So I'm working on this area. Gonna try and extract something out of this bug, maybe the top plate or the bottom plate, who knows, let's see what happens. So I removed uh, the piece from there and it seems that this bottom plate has all the um, the calcite on it so i'm going to try and shear off the top and just expose the bottom plate or at least that's my plan all right i'm sorry for the background noise but i thought i'd show you the plate i got it exposed i popped off the top there was like barely anything on there there's like only these broken crystals so it was worth it and you can see these large dog tooth calcite crystals all there and they've got some kind of cool secondary mineralization it's almost like botryoidal so i'm gonna take this home it's small enough for me to handle and then also while i was whacking away i managed to pull this guy off a small specimen and then these guys so that is very cool I'm very happy that I managed to pull these off. I think I'm going to be heading out soon because the weather does not look that great. It's uh, The skies are getting darker.
So here is that one plate of calcite crystals. I'm sure I played a little bit of a video beforehand showing me like cutting up and trimming some of the two uh, larger specimens I brought home. This is the final result of that one plate of calcite crystals. Um, I repaired the crystal that broke, just a, just a tiny bit of glue, and I just put it back there. And so after this crystal's whole, this crystal's whole, this crystal's whole. These are um, undamaged. Well, there is some cracking and stuff, of course. And this uh, covering, this is where the crystals actually grew into the top of the pocket. But the top was missing when I found it. And then there's just this damaged bit over here, but that's not too bad altogether. These are some very nice large dog tooth calcite crystals. And they're pretty cool. They actually uh, are UV fluorescent. So I will show that to you after I show the other piece um, that I trimmed. That one I didn't trim up as much. I just kind of cut the bottom down so that it could stand up nicely. But this one I trimmed up a lot because the crystals were only in one concentrated spot. So it, did, it, it was no use keeping all the extra stuff. And then this way I can store display it nicely with it not taking up too much space. Here's the uh, second plate of crystals that I collected. It's got some interesting white mineralization. Um, it is a little bit powdery. So it's not like I can tr try and treat this with acid because that would <laughs> erode away the uh, dog tooth calcite. So I'm just gonna keep it like this. And besides that, um, I think this is just a thin layer of um, calcite itself, like a white calcite, um, because it um, when I put it under UV light, it seems to be glowing itself. Um, but I kept this much bigger than the last one that I showed you because I just wanted it to stand up straight. And then there's also the fact, if you look right here where my finger is, there's actually, it's not a fossil, but it's the inner part. Basically what happened is um, the inside of uh, a ancient seashell got filled in and mineralized and the outside eroded away but this is the inside of it i forget what it's called i'm not a big fossil expert but that's what this is and i decided i wanted to keep that on this piece so i cut below it and then there's these guys and i'll see if i can show you the uv fluorescence in uh just the room light or if i have to turn the light off to show you because it is a little bit hard to um, video this in the dark. I haven't had the best experience trying to uh, video UV light stuff in the dark, but we'll try. Here we go. Here we go. So here you can really see how nicely the uh, crystals fluoresce. And it seems maybe the mineralization doesn't actually... Uh, doesn't fluoresce as I thought, if, as I remembered it. But you, it's trying to keep this kind of not shine directly on because as you can see, it just gets too bright. But you can see the nice kind of yellow green fluorescence that you get from these uh, calcite crystals. And interestingly enough, the fossil down there, if you can see, it's got a bit of orange fluorescence, which is cool. And the, the uh, host rock itself has kind of like a mustardy um, yellow fluorescence. So altogether a pretty cool fluorescent specimen. Now here is the other plate and you can see it's still, it's got that same yellow green fluorescence. And interestingly enough, it's kind of hard to tell, but the uh, inside of the crystal fluoresce is just slightly different. It's almost like a, a lighter yellow and then the outside is more of a green yellow. So it's cool to see that the kind of shows that this crystal kind of grew in stages and so the different stages have different uh, fluorescent colors. We have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was my first um, rock counting video of this year. 
I had a lot of fun. It was a, just a quick trip, but I'm happy with the specimens that I got. I got some nice UV reactive specimens, so that is cool. And they're pretty, they've got some pretty nice sized calcite crystals on them, so that is a big plus. So if you like this kind of content, um, please do like and subscribe. I also do some arrowhead hunting content if you're interested in that stuff too. But um, we have reached the end of the video, so I wish you a good day or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And I will see you guys in the next video.